Hey everyone, welcome back to another card reveal and it was Demon Hunter that was up this time. Actually for real this time, I didn't bait you like I did uh, two episodes ago. Uh, and I was expecting Demon Hunter to get some pretty powerful cards. They've been kind of languishing at the bottom of, honestly, all the game modes right now. I think they're struggling in Wild, Standard and Twist. And Jewels for that matter. Uh, but some of these cards, I think, mean Demon Hunter's got some sort of exciting future. They definitely... There's two big archetypes, I think, that come from this. Arguably a bit of support towards another one as well. Uh, so what is the big support they got? What is the big new archetype for Demon Hunter? Well, it is Naga Mage. I mean, Naga Demon Hunter. <laughs> they have the three mana one five Naga. After you play a Naga, deal two damage to a random enemy and draw a spell. Then switch. Okay, well, we've had this card before. Well, kind of, we've had this card before. Do you remember Spite Lush Siren? that I think it's been nerfed twice now, if I remember rightly, and caused all kinds of issues in Mage. So this was a very similar effect. I think at one point this was three mana. It was definitely four for a while. And this was after you play a Nagi, you refresh two mana crystals and you flip it. So the deal with Spite Lash Siren was you played a bunch of cheap uh, spells, a bunch of cheap Naga, and you would just mana cheat out of control and eventually just machine gun your opponent down in the face. Now, you don't get the, the mana crystals, so in theory, there is a limit to the combo for your blind eye sharpshooter. However, there are a lot of cheap Naga out there and also a lot of cheap spells, and they've received a lot more Naga and spell support, as we're going to see going forwards. So, I fully expect this Naga deck to see play, and I think it's going to be some sort of aggro, like very early mid range type of deck. Maybe try and get your blind eye sharpshooter to finish down your opponent. Just as a reminder as well for what support, or some of the support that Demon Hunter has for Naga synergies. The York Predation, which could be your zero mana spell to keep your blind eye sharpshooter going. They have Lady S as well, so you're getting even more value from the sharpshooting. Okay, Lady S was nerfed and she's only going to do one damage per spell. But hell, if you chain out, you know, four or five zero cost spells, she's going to hit you pretty hard. And she's also hitting the lowest health enemy, so she'll start knocking enemies off the board, which lets your two damage that goes randomly from the sharpshooter, ideally to go to the face, because that's where you want it to go. I, I definitely think this is a lot weaker than Spite Lash Siren, by the way, but it's still pretty goddamn aggressive, and there is an aggro Demon Hunter deck out there, and I think they'll just slot this Narg package into that deck. Uh, also, just as a reminder, I don't think this card will quite get into the, the Demon Hunter deck. Uh, sorry, yeah, the Narga Demon Hunter deck. If Miracle Salesman was a Naga, though, I think this would 100% have gone into the deck. And I don't know if, you know, things were slightly reworked. I guess it doesn't really look like a Naga, but they made sure this didn't have a tribe tag on it for this reason. Do you remember way back well, when in the neutrals that I said Snake Oil has the chance to be a really broken card? Because be careful of zero mana spells. You can abuse them. Here's Blind Knight Sharpshooter to potentially abuse it. So you might want to run a Miracle Salesman in your Naga deck, the one mana 2-2. Two, two. Get a snake oil for zero to keep this sharpshooter combo going. Who knows? Uh, other Naga, we have the Parched Desperado, a 2 mana 3 2 Naga. Battle Cry, if you cast a spell while holding this, give your hero plus 3 attack this turn. Well, that's disgusting for an aggro deck. Especially disgusting when you think, you know, turn 2, let's say you play Parched Desperado to dispose of everything, so 0 mana spell. Remember, 0 mana spells, they can be abused. You. Sorry, you'll play this Spose first before the Battle Cry. I'm sure people will make this mistake, so you get the Battle Cry effect of Parched Desperado. Then on turn two, you will have discarded a card, and for two mana, effectively, have a 3 2 on board and six damage with your face. That is a lot of damage for turn two. And this is so aggressively statted as well for a. Th well, I say so aggressively. He's aggressively statted at the very least, a 3 2. You have to deal with this little bugger, otherwise he's going to kill you. Uh, it's kind of hard again to evaluate this one. The closest I could see in text with like a Naga-like synergy was Seaweed Strike from Druid, which didn't really see any play, but to be fair, Druid didn't get exactly the biggest Naga support whereas Demon Hunter has. And I think if Seaweed Strike was in maybe like the Mage deck, it probably would have saw play in Mage for like, you know, X damage plus X attack, which would just be damage to the face. So, don't underestimate this card. I think it's pretty strong. And uh, now we have to go to some spells as well, right? 
All these nagas they want cheap spells. How about this one? Oasis Outlaws, one mana spell. Discover a naga. If you've played a naga while holding this, reduce its cost by one. This, I think you can almost equate to Gifts of a Shara. Gifts of Shara saw a lot of play in Naga Mage, unsurprisingly, which was two mana draw two cards. And it was if you played a naga, you would draw uh, an additional card to the draw you would normally have. Instead of drawing two on Oasis Outlaws, you're discovering a naga, which means you're basically drawing a card and a card that you probably want because the naga pool is fairly small for Demon Hunter. A lot of them are cheap, and you're going to take a one mana discount off that. That's pretty decent. So I think you can equate these, you know, one mana draw one versus two mana draw two. But it's also one mana draw one with a discount on it. So you could argue it's, it's slightly better, maybe. Either way, it's definitely going to make its way into that deck. And we've already seen a bunch of Naga that you would want added to your hand and reduced in cost. We also have Load the Chamber, another insane Naga spell. Three mana, deal two damage. Your next Naga, Fell, and Weapon cost one less. Really, really, really interesting card. So most times when you have uh, spells like this, and these are some examples of them not having it like this, normally when it says, like, draw something, it's something like Rush the Stage where you draw and discount at the same time. Lord of the Chamber doesn't have that. It just has the discount. So you have to draw the Naga and Fell spells and the weapon yourself. However... As we've seen some from some of the other cards, there's enough support in the archetype for you to have other cards that draw into these discounted cards. I think to run load the chamber of the deck. If you discount by each one of these things, like at the very least, if you hit the Naga and Fell spell, which you're almost certainly going to do, weapon you're probably still going to do. If you hit two of them, it's a one mana deal two damage. Not exciting. If you hit all three, zero mana deal two damage. Effectively, I know it's not quite the way that works. And that's really good, you know, if you want to change zero mana spells. Okay, again, it's not quite the same, but I can see a world where you're running load the chain, which I think is a slightly weaker card. You might run your, like, the low-cost weapons, like the one-cost weapon that gives you outcast cards, and instead it'll be a zero cost. You might also run the weapon that gives you draw until you have three cards in your hand and just truly vomit out minions and spells into the board. Uh, and there's enough fell and enough naga spells that you're going to draw into those before the game ends. As I said, normally when you have like a discount effect on it, it's not on your the condition of the next cards that are like played. It's normally like a, an entire like aura effect. So the example of this are like Mech Warper, which saw a lot of play and sees a lot of play in Wild. And in fact, it's been nerfed, I think, countless times. Might even have gone into the Hall of Fame. I don't even know what happened to Mech Warper. And Indices play in Overload Shaman for just discounting that small subset of Overload cards. And I kind of see in a, a certain way that the Overload Nature Shaman deck might be somewhat similar to this Demon Hunter deck, where rather than having board clears to set up for this big turn where you just machine gun them down in the face with spells, instead you just plink away turn after turn with aggressive minions, aggressive spells, and then occasionally, just to finish someone off, you might combo this... Uh, I forgot what the card was called now. Let me just go back a second. You're going to combine like your sharpshooter and just finish them off with a burst of damage to the face. Also, I'd like to add a card that was added with Badlands and we've shown it before. Dry Scale Deputy. What a great nag for this deck you'll be. Uh, if you draw a spell, you get a copy of it. What does this deck want? It wants lots of spells. It wants lots of cheap spells. Ideally, cheap spells that you put in your deck because they're the, you know, the best spells for the deck. I could easily see you drawing, you know, your zero mana... Again, names are so bad. Dispose of Evidence. Get a copy of that bad boy. That's, you know... That's another six damage to the face. That's disgusting. And it will just enable you to keep chaining these on and on. Uh, another spell, and I think this might also see playing the Naga deck. I'm not quite certain on this. I will say that I think this is the first quick draw card that's been revealed that I think might see play in a deck. Two mana Pocket Sand... Deal three damage, quick draw. Your opponent's next card costs one more. Now, two mana deal three damage is not particularly exciting. In fact, it's pretty weak, to be honest with you. The quick draw effect, though, that might make this actually playable. So, it's three damage that can go to the face as well. It's not minion specific, so the Naga deck will probably want something like this. 
There's more efficient ways to do three damage to the face, but what it might want, as I said, is if you're combining these cards which may fill your board with a bunch of Nargis along the way, as you're casting these spells, you might want to protect your board, right? And one of the great ways that people uh, protect the boards right now in uh, Standard are things like Cult Neophyte, the Speaker Stomper, uh, Norgan and Mage, which makes your opponent's cards cost like one more or the spells cost one more. And it makes it really hard to respond to your opponent's board, right? Because you're basically pushing them... It's almost like pushing them like a turn or two into the future. Oh, no, into the past, sorry. Wrong way around. It pushes them like a turn or two into the past and they can't play these cards anymore to respond to your board. So it's more likely to live and do more damage. Now, my hint, my problems with Quick Draw have been like, you know, what are the odds you're going to play this card on the turn you draw it? However, as you get cheaper and cheaper in mana, it's easy to weave these spells into that. I think at two mana... There's a reasonable chance you're going to play the quick draw effect. And you'd probably play this over other cards to make sure that the opponent's spells cost one more. Uh, just by the by in this, there's actually not been that many cards throughout history either where it just says the next card costs one more, not just for like the entire turn. In fact, I think the only example I could find was Frost Plague. So, And that is really annoying. I think everyone's played against Plague Death Knight and had one of these Frost Plagues drawn at like the most inopportune moment and it just ruins your life. And I kind of see that for Pocket Sand. Is it going to be aggressive enough? I don't know. But it might not need to be aggressive enough. It might just be the protection card that this deck needs. Uh, we get into another spell now. And I think this starts moving towards the other archetype that Demon Hunter might be running. Which will be some sort of value Demon Hunter. Kind of like the Relic, but I don't think the Relic package will be in it. Uh, four mana Fan the Hammer. It's called Cast of the Inn. Uh, in Hearthstone, he deals 6 damage split amongst the lowest health enemies. Honestly, a pretty weak effect on its own. Uh, Cinderstorm and Mask of Cthulhu saw very little play in Mage. Sometimes just snuck into decks, which did 5 damage random split and 10 damage random split, respectively. Fan the Hammer is 1 more mana, does 1 more damage than Cinderstorm. I wouldn't expect to see a lot of great play. Now, I admit, you know... It is targeting the lowest health enemy, so it's better at a, a board clear than doing damage, if you know what I mean. Like, Cinderstorm was often used for, or Mask of Cthulhu, a bit for board clear, but also a bit for doing damage to the face. If your opponent has a board and, you know, a, a reasonably health, Fan the Hammer is just going to hit the board. So this is a more control-orientated card. However, there are other decks out there that might want to run this. Spell Demon Hunter, for example, which... Has been hit pretty hard with nerfs over the uh, the last few months. But Silvermoon Arcanist, Enchanter sometimes sees play in those decks. Fan the Hammer with Enchanter and a big board. You could see it like 4 mana deal 20 damage. 20, 12 damage even. Split amongst the lowest health enemies. That's actually really good value then. Uh, and Silvermoon could up that to 8 as well. And if you're trying to finish someone off and, you know, you've cleared the board. You're like, last... Last bit of effort to do damage. Maybe Fan the Hammer is that last bit of damage you would want. Uh, where I think it's most likely to see play, though, is in, as I said, this value deck with Jotun. I tried to remember Jotun's name, like the last episode, was it? And I was calling it like Jotin, Jotum. Uh, Jotun was the name. Uh, for the rest of the game, you cast a copy of the first spell you draw. I could see you drawing Fan the Hammer, doing six damage to the lowest health enemies. Then you've got a Fan in... Fan the Hammer in hand, which you might then want to cast again later on, and just finish these people off. I think that is not spectacular, but I think it's decent compared to some of the other spells in there. And again, spoilers to going ahead, you might want to run one of these cards, in which case Fan the Hammer might fit into your top 30 cards for Demon Hunter. Uh, but first, we need to see one of the legendaries, and it's not the, the Highlander legendary, but it gets towards these incredible flavour. Mmm... Demon Hunter, great flavor for this patch. They have Snake Eyes, 3 mana, 2, 3, Naga, Battle Cry. You roll two dice, then discover two cards of those costs. If you get a double, you get an extra discover. All right, this is kind of insane. It's so hard to evaluate this, though. There's not really ever been a card like this. Firstly, there's never been a card, I think, in Hearthstone before that has an effect based on rolling dice. That's never happened before, so... They're exploring a new design space, I, and I respect that. But it's it's really it's really just odd. It's like a big value generator, I suppose. 
you can almost see it like if you say a two three is a two mana card you can kind of see this as one mana draw two but it's like you discovered the cards but it's not cards that would have been in your deck so it depends how you evaluate that and occasionally and i should have done the odds for this beforehand is it like is it a one in six of getting a double no it can't be a one in six of getting a double whatever the odds are of getting a, a double on two sets of dice You'll occasionally draw three cards for one mana, which is obviously, or effectively draw three, is obviously insane. Now, I, I searched the banks of Hearthstone for anything I could equate this to. Twisted Knowledge for Warlock, which saw, I think, no play, was discovered two Warlock cards for two mana. Which might make you think that... The Snake Eyes package is better because then you can kind of treat it as like a one mana two three, which is obviously insane. But this can always discover another card as well, so it could be discovered three instead. So where I've kind of drawn my estimate from, and I think this card will see play in the value Naga Mage deck. I don't think it'll go into Naga Demon Hunter though. I think it's going to be too slow for that deck. But again, maybe you want a little burst of value at the end, and maybe it'll sneak in. But the, the, the card that I think you could kind of compare it to the most is Peasant. I know it sounds insane. But Peasant was a 1-mana 2-1 that if you couldn't deal with it on turn 1, and this was often when it got its most value, playing it on turn 1, it would draw you an additional card, right? And then it was a 1-mana draw 2 card with a 2-1 on it. And that was seen as insane for your aggro decks that wanted to play as many minions as possible, and maybe put it a situation where you couldn't deal with a peasant plus another aggressive minion. And you just snowball from there. Maybe Snake Eyes can fill in this kind of niche. It's not as cheap so you can deal with it. But you get the value up front. And you can kind of treat it like a one mana draw two. Which is like a good roll from a peasant. I, I, <laughs> it's hard to say as I said. The other card I put on here is Spectral Sight. Which was two mana draw two potential and a conditional for an outcast. But I said, this is not conditional. You just roll dice. Now, again, depending on what deck this goes in, like, who knows what dice roll you want? You might want two cheap rolls. Like, you might want two one-cost spells. You might want two six-cost spells. You might want a double regards to the cost. It's so... It's so hard to evaluate. Like, you're just going to have to play with this card and see. But I think it will be run in a Highlander Demon Hunter deck for certain. Give you a bit of extra value you get to discover the cards so you can pick the cards you want for the opponent you're playing as well which is kind of the advantage of discover over draw even though it's a card you didn't put in your deck it might be a card that you would have put in your deck versus their deck but not against other ones so really interesting card i'm looking forward to playing with this and evaluating it for myself uh okay now we get towards just off highlander for a second although this might actually see play in the highlander deck so i put it here outcast demon hunter got a little bit of support and this might be the most flavorful card that Hearthstone have done in for many expansions. I love this card. 2 mana 3 1 mech, Bartendo Bot, Battlecry, uh, draw an outcast card and slide it to the left of your hand. Oh! Chef Kiss for the person to design this card. I love it. I, I want to marry the designer, have the children, settle down somewhere, and, you know live a happy life what a great flavor for a card so obviously you can imagine like you know someone ordering a drink at the bar in the saloon because this you know has like wild west themes he's like spinning a glass well he's a, a, i guess he's a mech he's oiling in a glass rubbing it in there fills it up with a, a lovely pint of bitter i'm sure the westerns didn't have bitter but i'm you know i'm believing slides it along the bar you know sliding it along your hand and then they catch it just before it goes off the end and take a, a nice swig of it. What a great theme for a card. Also, it's really good. So this is a, a tutor for outcast card. So if you have a really high value outcast card that you might want to, not want to run an outcast deck anyway, you can put Bart and the Bot into that deck to draw that outcast card specifically. And it puts it onto the left. So it will be an outcast effect that will go off. That's really, really strong as an effect. So, just for stuff in standard right now, Gnar Glacemith doesn't see that much play. I don't even think Outcast Demon Hunter runs him too much. 
Uh, but he's kind of, you know, a little bit more expensive than the average outcast card in Demon Hunter. And sometimes this guy might get stuck in the middle of your hand. You don't really want to play a 3 mana 3-3. Three, three. Instead, if you know, you've got a big weapon turn drawn up where you might be multi-attacking with it, throw a bartender bot on the board. He draws the Ganard, puts it on the left for you. You play it, you get the 3 mana 3-3 three, three with a plus 3 attack, and you smoke them in the face. The card that I think that you'll be playing this with is the new card Midnight Wolf. 6 mana 6 6 beast rush outcast summon a copy of this this is an insane card what an unbelievable value card uh just as a reminder for people you know a, a little bit back in the past there was this card called oasis surge which had a very similar effect it was a 5 mana 3 3 rush with a choose one gain plus two plus two or summon a copy of this minion and this was during the time of the quest untapped potential where you would leave yourself with unspent mana on four turns and you'd get a reward of the Assyrian tear, then you got both of your choose one effects. Oasis Surge was so insane in that deck, and I think actually originally it was 4-4, four, four, to be fair. So I think it was a five mana give you two six sixes. But either way, it was still so insane after the nerf that people would screw over their turns two, three, four, and five to play an Oasis Surge and get the effect of it. Midnight Wolf... It's a 6 mana 6 6 with arguably a less conditional effect. Okay, it has to be on the left or you know, the right side of your hand. That is a bit more conditional. But I said, if you pull it out with Bartender Bot and you play that, that's 6 mana 12 12 rush worth the stats. That is bonkers. That is such a swing turn. So I could see an Outcast deck running it, but unfortunately, the Outcast Demon Hunter that is played right now is more aggressive, although they do like rush minions and there are other ways to shoot this out with like. Rush the stage, for example, as well, will find this. Where I think it might see players in the, the Highlander deck again. You'll run one of this, one of Bartender Bot. Bartender Bot will draw this card out. You'll probably put in another Outcast card or maybe two Outcast cards. I think you'd probably try and get away with one more. Where Bartender Bot, if you've drawn your Midnight Wolf, then he'll find something else for you instead. But you get this Midnight Wolf, and the dream is on turn six, you play 12 12 of stats with Rush. And that is going to be disgusting. That is going to be so hard to deal with. Uh, so watch this space. I wouldn't be surprised if Midnight Wolf creates some sort of other archetype because the card is so insane that you want to run two of them. So you'll play some sort of value Demon Hunter deck, maybe even the Relic Demon Hunter package, and you will slot these outcast cards into that deck. Finally, and not by any means the least, again, we're back in Flavor Town. The other legendary for Demon Hunter, the, the Highland Rewarder, Gunslinger Kurtress, a 5 mana 4 6. If your deck has no duplicates, fire 6 random 2 damage shots at minions in the enemy's hand. Oh boy, hand disruption. That is lovely. And honestly, unlike other hand disruption, like for example, currently in standard, we have Disruptive Spellbreaker that sees very little play in Control Warrior. I have seen some people playing it though. Uh, but when Mutinous was in standard, Mutinous saw play everywhere. And when you had Bran at the same time, people would Bran your Mutinous to discard two cards from your opponent's hand. And throughout the history of Hearthstone, there's not been that many cards that force your opponent to discard or destroy cards from their hand. Because it's a really oppressive way to play the game is probably the reason for that. What I like about Gunslinger Kurtress is it's something you can kind of play around a little bit. So it's hand disruption, but not giga hand disruption. If you have some other big minions in your hand, Kurtress's shots are going to hit the other minions in your hand and maybe all your minions survive. In which case, you played a, a 5 mana 4 6, which is not great, but have weakened those cards in their hand. Sometimes, if you're playing some like super combo deck and you've got a bunch of spells in your deck, you're going to hit the combo pieces because they don't have enough minions in your deck. You're going to punish those decks for being super greedy, and that's why I like Kurtress. I think you will run a deck, and I think this deck will probably exist, considering some of the other tier one decks out there. Uh, you'll probably consider running this as a Highlander just for this effect. You will beat some decks with just Kurtress effects. What decks? Well, I'm glad you asked. Sif right now is arguably in the, it's certainly in the tier one deck, arguably the best deck. It's somewhere between this and Odin. By the way, Odin, another combo piece you might like to hit. If you fire six random shots into a Sif deck, they don't run that many minions, and the ones they do are typically pretty goddamn cheap. 
like the little one two elementals if you can hit sif and i said you're doing 12 damage and conveniently it's also an even amount of health which makes this a little bit easier to kill with kurtris and you kill their sif well now you're just playing against a spell mage deck that's not that frightening anymore the new expansion, Warlock, is probably going to run some sort of Excavate Azerite Snake build. They might bounce the snake back a few times. Well, if you've bounced the snake back one time, we know it's in your hand. Kurtress it and just obliterate that snake from hand. That seems really cool. The other thing about this card, and I don't actually know how this works, so again, I wouldn't mind some input from someone, maybe from like the dev team. I assume Silvermoon Arcanist will work with this. Spell damage will work with this. In which case, are you firing six random four damage shot at minions? In which case, you could literally obliterate someone's hand with Arcanist plus Kurtress. And also, since it's minions, does Enchanter work with that? So you're going to do four damage six times instead. I mean, sorry, that's the same against Arcanist, but you'll maybe run one of each. That would be disgusting. You might actually just machine gun down everyone's minions in their hand. It, you know, it's not a six shooter anymore. It's like a bloody... 16 shooter bang, 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 bang. all the minions dead really really interesting and I, I kind of like this design space the unfortunate thing for the the overarching archetype of this is you'd probably want to run in your highlander deck the most value package and currently the most value package for demon hunter is relic demon hunter but obviously you don't want to run one of the relics so it's going to be a completely different deck and i'm excited to see what demon hunters do with it but i think there's enough stuff that's been added here and there's probably enough stuff within the neutral package that I can see a Kurtress deck, you know, coming to fruition for just, just just disruption, honestly. Good old value decks, hey? Anyway, that's going to do it for this reveal. Up today, I think, is Rogue. Don't quote me on this one. I'm pretty certain it's Rogue. Uh, depending on the time this all comes out, I'll try and get another video up later. But if not, we'll do it tomorrow. See you then.